Hi. A few months back, I came across this table on Facebook Marketplace for 35 bucks. It looked a lot different then. I thought it had some potential, so I picked it up. The table was made of some sort of hardwood, although I can't be 100% what it is. All I know is it was made in Vietnam, so my best guess after some research and looking at a few pictures is rubber wood. If anyone watching here has any ideas or insights, please let me know in the comments. And welcome to the Freedom Workshop. So when I picked the table up, it was obvious that it had been used as a kid's project table. It was covered in glitter, paint, glue, and that ugly brown stain you see right there. I've never actually refurbished any kind of furniture before, so let's see how this goes. I started off by sanding the top and bottom of the table with 60 grit sandpaper I had left over in the shop. It's not the best paper by any means and it took a decent amount of time but it eventually got the job done. Next, I started filling any holes or knots with the help of a little Starbond and CA glue activator. If you've never done this, it can be a bit tedious, but a little self-satisfying at the same time, especially when you're using that activator. Moments just get lonelier the longer you're in love than if you were alone. Memories turn into daydreams, become a taboo. As you can see, there was a lot of voids to fill before I can continue sanding up to that final grit. This house on memories, take my picture now, shake it till you see it. After filling the holes with glue, I sprayed the table down with some compressed air and then used a spray bottle to get the table wet. Spraying the wood with water helps the wood fiber swell so I can sand it a lot smoother. I then let the wood dry on its own for about 20 minutes, maybe 10. 
before coming back with my sander. Before I start the sanding process, I mark the table all over with a pencil so I don't miss any spots with my sander. I then start working my way up through the grit starting at 80 grit, then 120, 150, and finally 180. Since I plan on using Rubio for the finish, I won't go any higher than that. Rubio suggests a 120 grit finish, but in my experience, sanding to 180 is okay. Quick tip. When you're sanding, don't skip any grits. You should also spray your piece with air in between grits to make sure it's clean and you're not sanding dust into the wood. I would also suggest spraying it down with water in between each grit as well. You might be mad at yourself later when you have to go back in, back down in grits and fix whatever you missed before. Most of the time, it's probably gonna be one of those whirl marks you get when you're sanding. You'll see a spot I missed later in the video that made me go back down and grit so I could fix it. I won't subject you to the insane amount of sanding that I had to do here and I'll move on. Once I got to 180 grit, I used my new DeWalt palm router to give the table a slight 45 degree chamfer on the top and bottom edges. I probably didn't say that word right. Some tell me it might be chamfer. If you know, or want to give me crap about saying it wrong, feel free to leave, leave a comment. Here I'm using mineral spirits to make sure the table is clean of any dust before I add the Rubio Monaco. I chose to use the walnut colored Rubio to give the table a little color and character. For those of you who don't know, Rubio has multiple colors you can choose from. At no time will this wood look like walnut, and I'm under no illusions that it will. You shouldn't be either. I just like the color after doing several color tests on other scrap pieces of wood. When using Rubio, you don't need to use the accelerator, but it helps cut down the curing time from about three weeks to one. I should have used smaller syringes here, but I was out, so I used these large ones instead. When you're mixing the oil and accelerator, Make sure to mix three parts of oil to one part accelerator. Once you've mixed your Rubio and accelerator together for about three minutes, you can start to work it into the wood. To do so, pour a small amount of oil on your piece and start moving it around with some sort of card like I do here. I usually use a Bondo spreader, but I couldn't find it. I probably actually used it for Bondo and then threw it away. When working with Rubio, it's important to remember a little goes a long way. Now that the Rubio has been spread across the surface, I like to come back with a white 3M scratch pad on a sander and work the oil into the wood. You can do this by hand if you like, but the sander is much faster. Just make sure you take the dust extraction off of the sander. Which of course I didn't do here at first. I did however pull my head out of my butt later. Another tip is to do the bottom of your piece first, flip it over, and seal the top right after. 
Any marks that end up on the bottom later, I can buff out. And it's important to seal the whole table all at once. If you only seal one side and let it dry before doing the other, there's a high likelihood your wood starts to warp. This is because one side of your wood can still draw on moisture while the sealed site can't. Let the Rubio soak into the wood for about 10 minutes and then wipe the excess off with a microfiber towel. When you are wiping it off, it's important to be a little aggressive. It has been said by many people, probably came from Rubio themselves, but you can't wipe off too much Rubio, but you can leave too much on. If you plan on using only one coat of Rubio, then you're done, and it should fully cure in about a week. But if you're like me and want a bit more sheen, then it's time for that second coat. To get ready for the next coat, grab yourself a maroon scratch pad for your sander and run it all over your table. Make sure not to miss any spots. I'll leave a link to where I bought these pads in the description they're just something I grabbed from Amazon while you're sanding with the scratch pad you should see a slight color change or cloudiness I don't know if that's the right word for it but I'm going with it basically some discoloration as you move the pad along once you're done make sure to wipe the surface down with a clean microfiber towel and some compressed air to make sure it's clean La danza dei maranza, è un popolo che danza, la danza dei maranza. Now that the surface is clean, repeat the steps we went through earlier for the first coat. Danza dei maranza, è un popolo che danza, la danza dei maranza, è un popolo che danza, la danza dei maranza, è un popolo che danza, la danza dei maranza, è un popolo che danza, la danza dei maranza, è un popolo che danza.
Now that the top is done and curing, it's time to paint the legs and aprons. I decided to go with an off-white color and add a bit of antique glaze to give the table some nice contrasting colors. So here I went with Rust-Oleum's French Cream Color Paint and Primer. And always remember to wear your PPE when you're using some kind of chemicals. For those of you who don't know, that means personal protective equipment. In this case, I'm wearing my mask. On that note, you should be doing it when using pretty much any power tool that throws sawdust around as well. I'm probably the worst offender of that rule and my lungs remind me every time. And here's that antiquing glaze I spoke about earlier and this particular brand I'm using is Valspar. You don't need a lot and a little goes a long way. If you have never used this product before, it can come in handy if you're looking for a distressed or aged kind of look. I've used it in the past and like it. The best way I've found to use it is to put a tiny amount on a towel and paint it on where you want. You can also use a paintbrush. Once I had the glaze where I wanted it, I used a lint-free cloth to wipe it off any excess and spread it around. Use as much or as little as you want and play with it until you get the look you want. If it starts to dry up on you, wet the cloth and it will wipe off what you don't want. I personally like to accent the edges or inside corners of a project. Everything should be dry in a few hours, but I like to wait about a day. When I did come back, I did a light sanding with another white 3M scotch pad to get rid of any high points made up of paint or glaze. When I'm doing sanding like this, I prefer to use a scotch pad over any sandpaper just to make sure I'm not sanding too far down into the paint. Well, it's time for a clear protective coat to make sure all my hard work isn't ruined down the line. Today I decided to try a clear gloss fast drying polyurethane made by Minwax. I've never used it before so I felt like trying something new. Using it was easy to use and the standard directions for any can of spray paint or poly applies here. If you're unsure how to use what you bought or how long it needs to dry or how often you might have to add another coat just check the directions on the back everything's going to be product specific the key is to not get too close so the poly doesn't apply too thick getting too close can cause drips running down the project and in the case of this minwax spray i added three coats and each coat was added after about three to four hours of drying time i also did a light sanding in between coats I decided to try using threaded inserts to reattach the aprons that the legs are going to attach to later. After drilling each hole, I countersunk them so the threads of the inserts would fit flush. I can tell you that using these inserts on the table was a mistake. The table was only a 3 quarters of an inch thick, which forced me to get smaller inserts. And while the inserts worked, drilling those holes made me nervous. That nervousness led me to screwing up and drilling a hole straight through the table. Not once, but twice. To fix those holes, I used some tape to cover one side and filled the other with black epoxy. This kind of mistake is why Ruby was great. I was able to sand down one area of the table and refinish it without having to refinish the whole thing. This mistake also made me learn that I shouldn't use any wood finish until all my hardware holes have been drilled. And once everything was refinished, you can even tell there were holes there. I hope you enjoyed today's video and see you next time.